But when I walked out into the basement with him, the television cameras come on and it blinded me for a little bit tonight, but I could see underneath. Jack Ruby was, was uh, standing out in the middle there and he had the pistol in his hand and had it by his side. And I didn't tell you that Jerry said he went back and looked at that after I told, told him this. And he said, you can see that pistol in his hand by his side. But I said, I can see it by, by his side. But no, not by the other police officers and the news people. They were looking up here at the head. They weren't looking down. But that's one of the things that I could see, and I usually look that way anyway. And he made a quick step, two quick steps, and double axed in it in, the, in his stomach. I had, when I saw him uh, standing there, I jerked back on him. Of course, I had him right against me, as you can tell, and I jerked back on him to pull him behind me, but all I did was turn his body a little bit, so it, the bullet hit him a little bit to the left of the navel. It went all the way through the stomach, cut the vena cava in the back, went through the liver and took a chunk out of that, and hit the end of the seventh rib over here and shattered it, and then bounced off and landed right about here, long ways. And when I took him in and, and, and examined him, I could roll that bullet around underneath the skin just like that. It, like a, if it hadn't hit that rib, it would come on through and hit me somewhere over here in this side here. <clears throat> Ruby was trying to get off another shot. Mr. Graves had grabbed the pistol in his right hand and, his, and Ruby's wrist was the other one. But I could see Ruby's fingers working on the trigger trying to get it uh, pull, get off another shot. But the uh, way Graves hold a pistol, he couldn't do it. 